Elijah in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania writes, Hey Paul, what are the advantages of combining BJT and FET output devices in a unit with multiple discrete rail voltages? Are they strictly electrical? Is there a sonic benefit? Or is this likely what was decided on as optimal for this price point and form factor? Which type of transistor do you prefer for audio amplification? And does Paul, the engineer, prefer a different type versus Paul, the listener? <laughs> well, first off, Paul, the engineer and Paul, the listener are pretty much the same thing. I use what engineering talents I have and to direct our engineers, to you know, help our engineers, or even when I'm, I mean, used to be I designed everything. Uh, well, there was a period where Stan and I designed everything, and then I designed everything. And then, you know, it, it's just a long period of, of, I mean, God, we've been doing this for, you know, 50 years. So yeah, over all that time. But my designs are done primarily through a series of listening, designing, measuring, listening, designing, measuring, you know, et cetera, right? And yeah, as we work backwards on this question, I often uh, will put an FET in place of a BJT if the situation warrants it. And it used to be fairly common that if we had sort of a transistory sound or it was a little bit sharp sounding, we could put a FET in there and that would soften the sound. FETs have that capability to soften the sound. And we even designed an all FET device, but that wound up being a little bit too wimpy sounding. It was, it was beautiful, kind of like velvet, but there was kind of lost a lot of life. So it really is like cooking. I mean, you know, too much spice here, too much this. It's, it's not a simple formula. Now, for those of you that don't know what we're talking about, a, a BJT is a bipolar junction transistor and an FET is a field effect transistor. What's the difference? Well, a BJT is our standard transistor. That's what we think of. That's a lot of what it used to be in um, computers. They don't use BJTs anymore. They use uh, MOSFETs and CMOS and all this stuff. The, the field effect transistor has basically taken over everything because they're so much more efficient. But a BJT is your standard PNP, NPN transistor. We still use quite a number of them and they really, you know, they have advantages. They take current in and they're current amplifiers where a FET is more of a voltage amplifier. So a properly designed FET on its gate, which is its input, where, as opposed to the base, which is the input to a BJT, um, really doesn't take any current. And they're, they're kind of voltage devices. The, closer, the closest thing you can get to a vacuum tube in solid state is an FET or a MOSFET, which is a, just a different kind of FET. Uh, why they would use some at different rails in a design, I, I don't know. Most of the designs that we do here at PS Audio are a combination for a whole bunch of different reasons that I can't cover in these short little videos uh, of BJTs and FETs. So sometimes a BJT, for instance, in a phono preamplifier, will have a whole parallel group of them to try and get the, the source noise down to nothing if we can. Parallel transistors will lower noise. Um, and then sometimes we'll use FETs as buffers and, you know, on and on and on. So it's way too complicated <laughs> for, the, for this thing. But I just did want to mention that as a design philosophy, Paul, the engineer, the like guiding light for this company will say, you know, have we considered a FET over here? Have we considered a BJT over there? Um, it's just, it's, it's by ear. It's what we're trying to achieve. It's how much, there's so many variables. I can't even really get into it. But I, so that's just a little bit of a taste of where we go with all of this stuff. And I, I hope that's not too obscure of an answer, uh, but it's just, it's too hard to answer that straightforward. So anyway, Elijah, thanks for the question. Talk to you later. Bye.